Chopi, look at my collection of stamps. Isn't it great? Wow, you have a great collection of stamps, Amber. Thank you, Chopi. Show me your stamp collection now. Here it is. I have pasted my stamps in an album. Hmm, this is a good way to keep stamps. I too want to paste my stamps in a book. But if I want to create a scrapbook, I will need to buy scrapbook pages. Can you tell me how many pages should I buy, Choppy? Um, I have no idea, Amber. Hey, Sandy, come and look at our stamp collection. Sandy. Can you help me figure out how many pages I will need to make a scrapbook? Sure, Amber. I'll help you. Amber, first you need to tell me how many stamps you have in all. I have seventy-eight stamps. Good. You can easily find. The number of pages you need by breaking up the number seventy-eight. Come on, Sandy. How can we break up numbers? You can break up numbers by expressing them in tens and ones. I will show you how using amber stamps as an example. Now, let us imagine. That we are pasting the stamps on pages. We will paste ten stamps on the first page. We will paste ten more stamps on another page. We will continue pasting ten stamps on a new page. Seven pages will have ten stamps each. We can say that we have seven tens or seventy. One page will have eight stamps. So we can say that we have eight ones or eight. To sum it up, we can say that seventy-eight is made up of Seven tens and eight ones, or seventy plus eight. Oh, seventy-eight can be broken down into seven tens and eight ones. So I will need to buy eight pages to paste all my stamps. Sandy, I would like to know more about tens and ones. How can we break numbers into tens and ones without the help of objects such as stamps? Well, I will teach you to express numbers from one to hundred as tens and ones. The number on the right hand side gives the number of ones. In twenty-eight, eight is on the right hand side, so we say. That eight is in the ones place. In other words, twenty-eight is made up of eight ones. The number on the left-hand side gives the number of tens. In twenty-eight, two is on the left-hand side, so we say that two is in the tens place. In other words. 
28 is made up of two tens. Now Amber, put together all this information and tell me how we can express 28 in tens and ones. 28 can be expressed as two tens and eight ones. It can also be written as 20 plus 8. Now, let me tell you a simple technique of breaking up numbers by expressing it as tens and ones. For any number less than 100, add a zero to the first digit. This becomes the number of tens. The second digit is the number of ones. Can you give us an example of this technique, Sandy? Sure. <laughs> wow! Now I can do this. Let's play a quiz. I will give you a number. You express that as tens and ones. Done. Thirty-eight. Hmm. The first digit is three. So, it would be three zero thirty and eight. That is three tens and eight ones. Brilliant. Chirpy, you do number eleven. First digit is one. So, it would be one zero ten and one. That is one ten and one one. Great! Well done, both of you. Well, I have no idea of how many stamps I have. But I know that I have pasted ten stamps on each page of my album. Now you know that we can present numbers as tens and ones. The fun part is that we can also express tens and ones as number. How? Yes. For example, I write four tens and three ones. That means I can write it as forty and three. Now the number with zero becomes the first digit. And the number without zero becomes the second digit. So, the number is 43. Wow! This is great! Sandy, can I use this technique to count my stamps? I have pasted 10 stamps on each page. Of course you can! Let's first count the number of pages that have 10 stamps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This means you have 8 tens. How? And the last page has only 6 stamps. So, we have 6 ones. Now, tell me, how many stamps does Chuppy have? Eight tens and six ones. This can be expressed as eighty and six. Now, eight will become the first digit and six the second. The number of stamps are eighty-six. Yippee! I did it! So, now we know that Chirpy has 86 stamps. Now, let's have some more fun with tens and ones. Now, I'll randomly divide the crayons between two of you. What do we do now? Well, you will count crayons but in a little different way. We will use the tens card to count the tens. The ones card will be used to count the number of ones. Now, 
we will make bundles of 10 crayons. We will then replace each bundle with a 10 card. We will replace each single crayon left over with a 1 card. Let's quickly do it. I have 1 green and 6 red cards. And I have 2 green cards and 5 red cards. Now, let us present this information in the form of table. Amber has 1 10 card and 6 1 cards. Chirpy has 2 10s and 5 ones. Amber, can you guess how we can add these numbers? First, we will count ones. Each red card is equal to one. And we have five plus six red cards. That is eleven red cards. So we have eleven ones. Eleven can be broken down into one ten and one one. So we will replace ten red cards with one green card. Now, we will count green cards, that is, number of tens. Each green card is equal to one ten. So, we have four green cards. So, we have four ten. Now, we have four tens and one one. Chirpy, can you tell me what number that is? Four tens and one one can be written as forty plus one, which is forty one. So there are forty one crayons. That's right, Chirpy. Now come on, both of you. Let us go to my house. I want to show you my stamp collection. Hey guys. I need to complete my stamp scrapbook. So, let's quickly go over what we learned today. We can break down numbers between 0 and 100 by expressing them in tens and ones. In a two digit number, the first digit represents tens and the second digit represents ones. For example, in the number 59, 5 represents 10s and 9 represents 1s. Therefore, 59 can be broken down into 5 10s and 9 1s or 50 plus 9. Expressing numbers as 10s and 1s makes it easy to calculate. You can find sum of two numbers by adding tens and ones separately.